Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to be talking about just a little quick few products in my Best in Beauty because I feel like I've had a couple of sort of favorites Best in Beauty type videos already this month or this past month. I had my um, most used products on vacation. Those are certainly some favorites. I also very recently did like a top five new products at the drugstore. So I'm left with still a few things to talk about here and I was debating whether or not to even do this video but then I thought I don't want to miss out on doing a Best and beauty video and I certainly have some things that I want to mention here but to avoid being redundant I'm not going to go into all the things that I mentioned in those other couple of videos if you want to see what's in those I'll just link to those below for you a quick mention for a rediscovered concealer that I've been liking it's the Maybelline Superstay Better Skin it's an oil-free concealer and it just has a wand applicator I wear it in the shade light medium kind of along the same lines that I enjoy that L'Oreal Pro Glow concealer it's nice for when you're you're wearing a very lightweight foundation look and you want your concealer to sort of follow suit with that. I really have found that this strategy works well for staying power, for making everything seem kind of even all across the face. Whereas when you wear like a really light foundation or BB cream and then your under eye concealer is like full coverage, like a whole other world. That's when things can look really unnatural as the day goes on because you've got this thick, heavy, full coverage on the under eye and everything else looks natural and it just doesn't make sense. So how is this different from the Pro Glow? This is still kind of one of those natural lightweight concealers, but maybe just a little bit thicker, but more than anything, this particular shade, this light medium, is maybe just a little bit darker than the um, ivory shade that I had in the Pro Glow. And as my skin gets a little bit more of a tan going on, it can maybe handle a bit more depth in the concealer department but I've got that all in this area that's the only concealer I'm wearing today and I just think it did a really good job without a lot of time without much hassle whatsoever just blended it out real quick and I was done yet another rediscovered product that I've been enjoying over the top of concealers and just a little brightening like right in this area right here also the t-zone um, is my Besame brightening powder here. It's the brightening violet powder. It says translucent, um, but it is a very light shade of violet. It's really strange, but the coolness of this powder, it almost makes it more brightening than just a white or cream colored powder, you know, and I just lightly take it with like my e.l.f. small tapered brush. That's this brush right here, and I just dab it very lightly right in this zone, and then I take it around my nose because I'm not really wearing powder anywhere else on my face like a skin tone powder. I've got powder bronzers and blushes and stuff, but the main area I want to hit is here with that, and I put it on the T-zone real lightly and that's it. It's just a very pretty powder. It doesn't look too thick. Obviously you could apply too much of it and make it look thick, but I just find that to be very, very brightening. I had taken the vanilla one, which is a little bit yellow toned on vacation with me. I like that too, but I do believe that this um, lilac one is even more brightening or the lavender violet. <laughs> Another thing I uh, mentioned just sort of here and there in other videos, but I wanted to give it a specific like thumbs up in my best in beauty video is my Too Faced Sweethearts Bronzer, the Sweet Tea Baked Luminous Glow Bronzer. So good. I never really thought I would like a luminous or slightly glowy bronzer as much as I do with this product because I will take the deeper half of the compact and just use that a little bit right in here. I don't know that anybody would even identify that I have been contoured, but it just shades this area slightly. You see what I mean? And it looks really pretty taken, you know, across the decollete area around the hairline. It's so perfect. It is just the ideal summer bronzy glow. And I reach for this. I want to use it every day. In addition to my Maybelline Fit Me blushes, which I have in a couple shades that I would classify as kind of rosy neutral, you know, the nude shade, the wine color. They're not super bright shades, but when I want to go a little bit brighter with my blush, still really been enjoying this Infallible Paints Compact here. Today I'm just wearing this shade. That's the only blush color I have on very lightly. When I want a really good coral, these two colors together are great, and these pinks, there's something about a pink blush in the summertime. It just it brings a lot of life to the face. Maybe your skin is getting a bit more color to it. These types of blushes are just so flattering. 
gathering and they're all matte they're really intense I just I love this compact so much I love that something like this is available in the drugstore albeit at a slightly higher price than maybe some other drugstore things but it is a palette of four blushes little goes a long way blushes so you're gonna have this for a while if you get it one other thing I don't think I've mentioned this at all yet this Smashbox spotlight palette in pearl this is the one that um Casey Holmes. She has a couple of them. There's a pearl one and a gold one. I had had this for a little while and I was using mainly like these first couple shades. One is the really light pearl. One is a little bit softer kind of champagne color. I don't know how different they are from a lot of things that I have. And then randomly I decided to jump into this last shade. Now this last color, this is Turn It On Pearl, Crank It Up Pearl. And this last one is called Blow A Fuse Pearl. And it has identifiable like little bits of sparkle in there. Compared to the other two, it looks like a really over-the-top highlight. And I just thought one day, I'm going to use that. It's like beige, but it's got all the sparkle and it's pretty dang frosty. And I had not really liked the way that look just swept on my cheeks. And then I realized what you need to do with that shade to make it look absolutely next level beautiful and I'm gonna demonstrate this even though I'm already wearing it I'm gonna put a little more on I've got this highlight and glow brush from Moda this is a must must have highlight brush in my book I pick up some of the product tap off the excess and then absolutely buff this shade in don't just like graze it across the skin like you might do with some highlights actually buff it in circular motions hit the top of that cheekbone and then come down slightly on top of the cheek as well this compact does have a mirror by the way like that but something about buffing this one into the skin it's like you kind of hide it into your skin a little bit more it just meshes with the skin more when you buff it in and then take your setting spray like this is a very natural process for me because highlight is normally the last thing that i use and then i'll put some setting mist on the setting mist on top of that, this happens to be the Mario Badescu, but I've used different kinds. When that highlight gets that little bit of moisture added to it, and it's already been kind of worked into the skin a bit, it just looks so naturally glowy. It's awesome. I love it. I love how I even have that right up in a potentially problem area where you can see a few little lines coming in there like around the eye, outside of the eye area, and it's not even affecting that problem. It just looks so dewy and nice. So I thought I'd share that little trick with you because I really like that highlight used in that way. And also somebody did ask me um, on some form of social media recently what my favorite brushes are for bronzer, blush, and highlight. So real quick elf complexion brush love this for bronzer love it for a really fast contour so of course i use that with the Too faced sweet tea today for blush i kind of bounce around sometimes i love my milani one which is kind of a thick fluffy blush brush um this estee lauder sculpting brush is nice for maybe some more neutral softer blushes because it will pick up a decent amount of product it's kind of densely packed here in this curved shape and it really accentuates this apple of the cheek. I don't like using this with my most intense blushes because obviously it can pick up a lot at one time and it doesn't really diffuse color. It's more of a sculpting kind of product. Nice with my softer or more neutral or neutral blush. Neutral blushes. It's nice with my softer or more neutral blush. It's nicest with my softer or more neutral blushes. And then I've got this one. This is my up and up blush brush. And I've had this for quite some time. This I really like when the color is a bit more intense and I just want to dab into it and pick some up lightly and brush it right here on the cheek. It's got a nice taper to it. It's a little more flattened out than the Milani. And I find I really like it with, you know, bright shades like this. It just gives the perfect small pop of color. Highlight wise, I just showed this Moda highlight and glow brush. I think you can buy this on its own. However, when I got it from Walmart, it came with this quick contour brush. I've not really decided if I like this brush. I haven't used this enough to understand it really. It appears that it's kind of meant to cup the cheekbone somewhat, but I don't want dark product going up above my cheekbone contour wise. So I don't know if you love this brush and you want to try to explain it to me, go for it. But I love the highlight brush that came with that. Right after getting back from vacation, I used up 
my Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit, the number four. And I decided to pick this one up, this Tarte Arch Architect, and it's a universal brow pencil. I don't know how much luck all y'all have had with a universal, you know, something marketed as works for anyone type brow pencil. But for me, this is working pretty well. It's kind of a cool taupey color. And if you apply a lot of pressure or intensity, you get this kind of shade. And if you keep it lighter, it just ends up looking like a light, almost blondish brow pencil, I guess, a cool blonde taupe. Can you see the tip of this product? It's a straight up triangle. So it's definitely thicker than a Precisely My Brow Pencil or an Anastasia Brow Wiz NYX Micro Brow. A lot thicker than those. I would say it fills in the brows a little bit faster, but I just go over the whole brow with that. And then on the other end, you've got just a clear gel, which I think is rather handy to have together with this product. Sometimes if I feel like I've applied too much of the pencil, I'll grab for a separate spoolie and just help rake it through, you know, just a bare one. But I do really like having this gel on the opposite end of this product. I think it just makes everything really quick and easy. So I like that for me, and I would love to hear in the comments section if you're a different hair color, skin tone, I don't know, whatever, does that color actually seem to be universal and work for you too. Also, a shout out to this Lip Architect thing from Tarte. This is a lipstick and liner in one. This would be the wide end of the lip product, and I would say it's smaller than most jumbo pencils, but larger than most lip liners. And I really like filling in my lips with this. I think they describe it as a satin matte finish. It's very pretty. I've got it in the shade called Cutie Pie here. I love this color. Um, it's kind of a berry with a little bit of neutral thrown in. It's not a real purpley berry. And then the liner side is what you would expect out of a standard lip liner. It coordinates pretty much exactly with the lip color. I'm going to draw them side by side. And I've tried a few other shades in this as well, and it seems like what they're giving you is the same shade, just a little bit different um, formula. You can just tell a little bit more creaminess with the thicker side, and then the lip pencil part is like 100% matte. But I like taking the wider side and filling my lips in with it. And there's a ton of precision with that, yet it glides on so smoothly. And then I just take the liner side and kind of perfect little areas, just get my edges really nice and clean. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want my five new at the drugstore must-haves, I will link to that video below in the description box. I will also link to my most used products on vacation because there's some great, just no fuss, easy things in that video too. And if you're new here to my channel, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Somebody told me you need to tell people to subscribe just to remind them to do so. So I guess that was good advice. Thank you. And I am telling you to subscribe if you haven't already. Another great way to support my channel is to click the like button too, because I know that gets the video um, a little bit more out there in terms of showing up as a suggested video on YouTube. So thank you for all your support. I really appreciate you guys so much. I love doing what I do here on YouTube and I could not be more grateful for the amazing amazing, caring, wonderful audience that you are. So thank you for your time and I will see you soon. Bye.